Hi everybody, it's Christine at CL Aldridge Art and it is currently Friday night at about 10.25 p.m. and uh, which means it's been almost a week since my last live stream uh, and I haven't done any recording at all but I wanted to come on tonight because I have taught myself how to do my gemstones with ink tents. And so I wanted to show you that. Um, and I also wanted to show you why I've been gone all week. I have uh, been threatening to teach myself to draw a dragon. And I have drawn my first dragon. So this is my, uh, this is my new drawing. I just finished inking her. Her name is Spica, and uh, as you can see, she's very fond of butterflies. She is a friendly little girl. Uh, the butterflies adore her too, and of course what she likes about them is when they land on her, it tickles. Uh, so at any rate, um, this uh, drawing with some writing in here as to uh, some of the stuff I just said will appear in my Etsy shop tomorrow so look for her if you like this style of drawing hopefully that will reflect in whether or not I sell any and uh, if I do then I will continue on uh, in this vein and if nobody likes her or nobody wants to buy and color her then I will uh, think up something else to draw <laughs> at any rate uh, putting that aside uh, this is a, a I, I mean, this obviously is not the first time you've seen this. I've been working on it for a while. It is, I wanted to see if I could do one 100% in ink tents with no Prismacolor pencils, you know, no advanced shading or anything like that. Just using the uh, Prisma or the ink tents, the Derwent ink tents. And the, the hang up that I was having is whether or not I would be able to do the gemstones. And so I finally uh, uh, buckled my seatbelt and, uh, and tried one, and I am very pleased to report that it turned out very nicely. And so I wanted to show you all uh, how I did that and uh, hopefully encourage you to try and do it in your own um, coloring. So. I have left a little detail in each section uh, to do, and uh, and so I wanted to show you those and just yak a little and say hi. How is everybody? I haven't been here all week, and and hopefully uh, uh, somebody will want to watch. <laughs> At any rate, I will zoom you down and. Uh, Oh, good. All right, so it looks like we're keeping focus really well. Um, now, that is as uh, as close as I probably want to be for some of this, uh, but we shall see. And, uh, okay, so now these little flowers in here. Uh, I did in the, I originally put a layer of golden yellow and then I put uh, a little bit of the mid vermilion which is the nine, uh, no it's the 310, a little bit of mid vermilion at both ends and it ended up being like this which actually let me let me zoom you back so I can zoom you down in closer probably have to play with the focus at this point there it is okay so as you can see it's a little bit washed out now, 
I think that the camera is gonna is gonna do a certain amount of washing out at any you know anyway. But I just wanted to show you that if you add a second layer, you can bump your color up. And so that's what I have done. I've just added a little bit of a second layer. And since the paper's been wet before, it takes the color a little bit differently than it does when you're putting on your first coat. So you do need to be a little more careful with, uh, with a, a second coat because it's likely to uh, spread around much quicker so I just encourage you to always use a light hand with your brush. You can put as much color down as you want at this point, but um, it really is about the, the, whoops, I keep choosing the wrong water brush. Okay, third time's the charm, this has to be the right one. <laughs> okay, it is. So let me make sure I've got a water flow. I do. Okay. And so I'm just really, I don't want to necessarily bump it around or, you know, stroke it around because I want to preserve that golden color. So I just wet a little bit of the outside and then I wet the color itself on the theory that it will flow into that previously wet area. So if you just don't do very much and then just, just wet your ink to activate it. And that way you can keep your color where you want it, but just sort of bump it up in intensity. And I think it, it creates a very nice effect. Now, the easy, you know, the, the other way to do it, of course, would be to, you know, with, with a fair amount of control, would be to use your colored pencils. But this is just to show you that you don't have to always use uh, colored pencils to enhance your ink tints. As May uh, shows you every time she does one because the work that she does in her coloring books with watercolors and ink tints is that's who I learned this from that you can uh, bump your colors up that's May Brox at May Brox's channel so I really like the way that this uh, the way that this works out and it dries when it dries it'll look much uh, much more smooth I guess is what I want to say so how is everybody how's your week been what's been going on in your lives my fans are very glad that I have sat down at drawing again my friend Virginia uh, uh, actually sent me a private message that said, are you ever going to draw anything again, Christine? <laughs> we want some new stuff, please. It's kind of unusual for me to take as many weeks away from drawing as I did. But I think my little brain needed the creative rest. I, I pushed pretty hard to get uh, fabulous flowers out the door and it, it took quite a while and I, I part of it is uh, it is the best work that I've done to date but part of it is, is that um, that at, as I approach the end of a book you know the, the last few drawings I always start the old well is it good enough are they going to like it 
you know, that, that kind of thing that I try really hard never to succumb to those little voices that, you know, that, that give me that self-doubt. But that doesn't mean that I don't occasionally have them. <laughs> okay, so that was that one. And then, uh, let's see. I don't... I believe that I did this one already with a second... Yes, I did this one already with a second uh, intensity. But I thought that I would do it again. So uh, the other day, I got to thinking that I have never told you the story of how I became an artist or, you know, what, what it was that sort of, that sent me in this direction. And I have to tell you that it was... Uh, completely an accident. Uh, if you follow my, uh, if, if you have followed my early videos where I discuss in some detail uh, some of the, you know, events of my life, you'll know that I have a couple of, had a couple of sisters. One has since passed away. But at the time uh, that I moved east, she was still living. Uh, and then I have an older sister. Now, there are 13 years between me and my oldest sister. And there were seven years between myself and my middle sister. And... So, you know, as a kid, they were always my big sisters. And, and we never, since we didn't grow up under the same roof, uh, you know, we didn't share a lot of the same memories, la da 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 So where am I going with this? Okay, well, one of my reasons for uh, when, I, when I became single and moved to the East was to get to know my sister better. And I have touched on this subject a couple of times. Uh, but to be perfectly honest with you, it, it causes me to, uh, or maybe it used to cause me, uh, or maybe I just don't know, uh, to become somewhat emotional, I, I guess is, you know, what it is. But let's just say... <laughs> that uh, early in the game, when I moved out here, uh, my brother-in-law tried to talk me out of it. And I didn't quite understand what he was talking about. But he did say that there was a decided and distinctive difference between the upper classes of the East Coast and the lower classes. And uh, he did not want me to suffer with that. Now, <laughs> given that I am from California, where uh, we, we just, I guess maybe we don't think in those terms. You know, people in the West generally are much freer minded than people... Uh, oftentimes on the East Coast of the United States, uh, about all kinds of things. And so I didn't really understand what he meant. And then sort of early on with my being out here in the East, my sister uh, took me aside and, and told me that, you know, when she was uh, young, that she made a conscious decision. Now all I'm doing is I've, I've got the, I use the, the deep rose, and I'll get back to that in a second. I use the deep rose here on the ends, and then I used the Shiraz, the color Shiraz. 
uh, down here. And I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did before uh, on that other one. I'm just sort of wetting these and then I'm going to let the colors flow where they will. Because what I'm after is just for these, you know, deeper hues down here at the bottom and the lighter hues on top. Uh, that she had made a conscious choice to be a small fish in a small pond with big fish. If that makes any sense. And those were actually the terms that she used. Basically what she was saying was she made a conscious choice to hang out with the 1% uh, and you know and, and and get involved in, you know, in, in those, I guess, you know, become one of the 1%. There you go. That's what she wanted to be. Uh, or maybe not the 1%, but certainly old money. Now, she ran up against the very same class system that, uh, that I talked about earlier, and I think to a certain extent uh, that hurt her feelings greatly. But what she did is deal it down to me. And, uh, and that caused me uh, no end of, I mean, true agony, you know, true emotional agony. Here I had come all the way out here to, uh, you know, to, to be with family and to, to hopefully get to know sisters that I didn't really know very well better. And, uh, you know, basically because I don't have the pedigree, uh, you know, I don't get acknowledged as the sister. So I cannot tell you how many times I heard well, we didn't know she even had another sister. And so that went on for years. And it kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And, uh, you know, if I, if I was allowed to come to visit, it was only when other people wouldn't be around, that kind of thing. And now, normally, somebody like me, with my particular uh, attitude, I'm going to say, you know, well, screw you. Uh, and, but, you know, this was my sister, and I adored her. And so instead, I let it hurt me. And I let it do, uh, you know, some pretty serious damage. Now, uh, I think that really what bothered me more than anything else is that she didn't give a hoot that that's what it was doing. It wasn't like I kept that part of it secret, you know, or I suffered in silence. I mean, I basically, I railed at her a few times about the kinds of, you know, things that, that, that you know, that the, the kind of feelings that the words that she was using were evoking. And it all after, you know, many years of this, uh, it got to the point where I had to actually beg for an invitation to even get to meet my great niece when she was born. And that was in, she was born in 2014. And I did not get to meet her until March of 2015, even though I am only three hours away and would gladly have driven the distance for the opportunity 
to, you know, meet my, my great niece. So this all uh, sort of came to a head on my birthday in uh, April of 2015. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next section. And that is... Uh, that is... Ah! That is these. Okay, now, let me, uh, okay, so now I used just a flat yellow primarily on these. It wasn't the golden yellow. It was the sun yellow. And I had already created so many uh, on this piece, so many of these golden yellow and vermilion colored flowers that I wanted to do these a little bit differently but they were they looked so flat to me if they were just plain yellow. So what I did is I bumped up the outer edges with this golden yellow color. Uh, and so that is what I'm going to do right here. Once again, this is the golden yellow, which is number 230. And I'm just going to go around the outside. And I want to make sure you can see that. Okay, so this all came to a, uh, to, for me, what turned out to be a crisis uh, on my birthday in 2015. When she called me, and her exact words were, well, I guess it's time for your boring birthday call. Now, as it happened, <laughs> she reached me as I was uh, visiting uh, down the street with a neighbor, and I had my cell phone with me, and uh, it was a man that I was interested in uh, at the time, and uh, he has since passed away, uh, but... It, it sort of, I mean, I guess, I don't, I, I sort of excused myself off the phone and told her I'd call her back in 10 minutes. And in fact, I did. I called her back in 10 minutes. And uh, do you know she's never returned that phone call? Ever? Not from that day to this? She has never returned that phone call, nor has she ever called me again. Uh, so, I, and now there is a reason that she has never called me again, and I'll tell you what it is, but as it turns out, I was going, I mean, we had sort of, uh, had, uh, she, she has a, a new, uh, boyfriend, or had, at that point in time, a new gentleman friend. We'll call him a gentleman friend. He is, in fact, I'm sure, a very nice guy. Um, and she had just, uh, they had just moved in together. And so she uh, had suggested in a, an email at Christmas uh, that I should, you know, think about coming down you know, I, I, for all intents and purposes, it was, in fact, an invitation to come and visit them uh, and see this new house. And that, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was heartfelt and lovely and, you know, la da 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 But after, I mean, keeping in mind that other than that email at Christmas, I hadn't talked to her in about a year. I think the last time I had had, uh, had now that wasn't for lack of trying, by the way. I would, I would call quarterly. About every three months, I would call, and about once a year, she would actually return the call. 
I used to call her monthly. You know, I'd, I'd call her once a month. And then, uh, then I got a, a return phone call about every, <coughs> I don't know, every fifth, fifth or sixth month, usually. But, you know, after 10 years of that, I was, you know, kind of got the, I got the hint that, you know, that, that I wasn't somebody that she wanted to yak on the phone with. So, uh, so I hadn't heard from her in about, talked to her, you know, talked to her in about a year. And the words that came out of her mouth were, I guess it's time for your boring birthday call. Now, whether or not she intended to say that out loud, whether or not it was intended as a joke, I don't know. And I don't care. But. So. After I called her back and she didn't call me back, uh, by the 25th of that month, the month of my birthday, which by the way is April, uh, I was I was pretty beside myself. I was I was I mean I don't mind saying that I was in a as black a depression as I have ever been in. Uh, you know my last sort of living relative, because by then my other sister had passed away. has quite obviously rejected me in no uncertain terms. And, uh, and you know, and so what was I going to do with the rest of my life? And why the heck was I even here? You know, those were the kinds of thoughts that I was having. Uh, so, the, 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 yeah, the, on the 25th of that month, okay, I'm going to work on these. And these are simply the same two colors that I used in the uh, these flowers. They are the Shiraz and the Deep Rose. So the Shiraz is number 600 and the Deep Rose is number 710. And I think I am going to back up one for this. Yeah. So that way, because I have to, I have to get in here, and I need to be able to, to see it. So I thought I'd do this big one. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so on the twenty fifth of the month, I wrote her the equivalent of a, uh, of a dear sister letter. You know, or a dear John letter. <clears throat> Basically, it said I would not be coming to visit. And that, uh, as far as I was concerned, you know, that that this the whole effort on my part was over. That you know, if she wanted to get in touch with me, she knew where I was. She's got my number, and you know, basically, I kissed her off because it got to the point where it was toxic for me. It was toxic for me every year to hold out hope that this would be the year it would be different. This would be the year that I would be remembered at Thanksgiving, or this would be the year that they would remember me at Christmas. You know, that kind of thing. And you do get to a point in your life where you really do have to purge yourself of relationships that are toxic to you. That you just, you know, you realize that you have tried, and you have made your best effort, uh, and it, and it's not good enough. And you know, the last time that I went to see the you know the invitation that I had to beg for to go visit my uh, to go visit my nephew and meet his daughter, I was forced to stay in a hotel, uh, despite the fact that they have a, a large home. Had a large home. Uh, and then I was allocated like 20 minutes when I arrived in town. Uh, and then like uh, we had dinner together that night. So that was what, an hour or actually two hours because the dinner was actually at uh, 
my ex-brother-in-law's house. And then I was allocated a, a, an hour or two uh, at a trip to the zoo the next day. No conversation at all about anything, you know, pertaining to anything real in the world. Uh, so, to my mind, it was a... Uh, it was a cost-benefit analysis, and further visits uh, came out on the short end. <laughs> you know, you spend three or four hundred dollars, and you get, you know, maybe a total of two hours of their time. Sorry, not happening. But at any rate, uh, so I, you know, in my in my little brain. What I did was I put a limousine out front <laughs> of my house. I pictured them all standing in my living room, and then I tossed them out the door <laughs> and told them to go away. And uh, the next day, I'm actually going to be sorry I did that, but I needed to cover up that weird white spot. The next day, I picked up a pen And I drew my first drawing. And I have drawn every single day, or done something artistically, every single day since. So in my bio, uh, my early bio, I think I might have taken it out now, but I have said that drawing actually saved my life. And it is true. It did. Uh, finally, indulging uh, in, in, you know, just 100% right brain creativity, not only did it cure my depression, 100%, but it also gave me a reason to, uh, to be here. You know, now I know what I'm here for. You know, because remember that I'd had a career. And, you know, and, and and I was good at it. As a matter of fact, I got offered a job yesterday. <laughs> I got offered a real job yesterday running an office. And, uh, and, and I said no. <laughs> Because I have absolutely zero desire to do that. So I guess where I'm going with this story, and the reason why I even bother to tell it, is that if you are suffering, if you have somebody in your life and you are holding out hope that they will change, it will never happen. The only person that you can change is you and your attitude about how you, you know, about how you handle it. And sometimes, man, you really do. you got to make that tough choice to just rid yourself of something that is causing you pain. And it is hard. It is really hard. It took me a long time to get there. And my friend Carol will tell you how many... Times I called her just in absolute tears uh, over, you know, and, and yes, there is every possibility in the world that I am overly sensitive to that particular, you know, that particular uh, situation, you know, the, the whole, the whole issue around family and all of that, I could easily be. And, but knowing that and, and, uh, and recognizing that it was hurting me, it was very important to me and recognizing situations now that have the potential to hurt me, uh, 
I'm, I'm sort of better at it, I think. And that doesn't mean that I've given up. It does, it does, doesn't mean, I mean, it does mean that I just simply am not going to pursue those relationships any longer. Uh, because they're not good for me. And so, and art, art is a much, uh, more productive way for me to spend my time because I have been very gratified to be the recipient of some lovely letters uh, and notes from people who have found some peace and some, uh, uh, you know, some joy in coloring the things that I draw and have actually told me that. And, and, you know, if you live long enough to hear somebody say that something that you have done has a, had a positive effect on their life, then, then you have done your job as a human being. You know, if, if, if you've raised good kids, if you have, uh, you know, if you have, have, have positively affected another human being and you hear about it, that is the most gratifying and brings on the most gratitude uh, that, that you could ever imagine. Which is one of the reasons why I always tell people when they have had an effect on my life. I think I even made a video about that. Uh, I, I, I let people know. You know, I really do. Because, uh, because A, life is short. B, I read Mitch Albom's book, which is The Five People You Meet in Heaven, and that's exactly what it's about. You know, it's sort of recognizing the people that have had effects on your life, both good and bad. Uh, you know, so in a, in a way, I guess, I am grateful to my uh, sister for showing me how I don't want to be. You know, showing me how I would, how I would never want to treat another human being. Especially not one that I was related to, you know. Although, you know, there are lots of toxic relationships out there with people that you are related to. There's, you know, there's no doubt about that. Hey, uh, that was one of the things that I was really grateful for. You know, when I grew up, I didn't much like my aunt very much because she always looked at me like I was a, like I was a, a, a specimen under glass. And of course, as an adult, I now know why. It was A, because she didn't have any kids of her own. So I was sort of a, 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 a wonder to begin with. You know, her, her son's, her her son her her brother's child and i also was the you know the only one once again with the gift of proximity in that we all lived in the same state you know my other sisters didn't live in the same state and so you know they were more of a curiosity but she got to see me every two weeks and you know <laughs> and and then she and i became very good, very close friends you know, very close friends after my own mother was gone and and my stepmother was in dire straits and all of that. And it was wonderful. And, you know, my uncle, who, who had both his redeeming qualities and his awful ones, who changed, you know, morphed himself from a nasty human being into a good one. So people, people are... People are funny, you know. People are really funny. They can, they can, can break your heart and they can make you cheer. And 
and you just have to accept people for who they are. You know, you cannot change them. Nothing about it. You anything that you do is ever going to make them change. But you can be an example or a safe place, you know, for them to land. Unless, of course, they're using you. At which point in time, then, you know, toxic relationship. Get rid of them. Dump them. So that's the story of how I became an artist. I uh, And then, of course, I just started one day because nobody told me I couldn't. <laughs> And I've been teaching myself to draw new things ever since. Like dragons. And mice. And birds. And flowers. And what I haven't been able to teach myself I have learned from one or more of all of you. Like coloring. I learn coloring from each and every one of you who posts to Instagram and Facebook and who colors my art differently every time. And, you know, you get to see people's imaginations at work and and, you know, it, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, no two people have ever colored something that I've drawn exactly the same. And the breadth of vision out there is just incredible. And one more and we are done. So hopefully you all don't mind that I sit here and wax poetic at you and tell you bizarre stories that border on probably more information than you need. I just haven't had a chance to do it all week. <laughs> and I missed being here. Oh, I did want to give a quick shout out to Grace over at Grace's Coloring. Grace's Coloring. I want to call it Grace's Coloring Corner, but I don't think that's what it is. Uh, but you know who I mean, Grace, uh, for doing uh, some flip throughs of uh, not only my books, but uh, Susan Curry's books as well. So thank you very much, Grace. That is greatly appreciated. I hope you are enjoying your uh, copies that you got, that you bought, obviously. And I would love to see something you've colored in one. I think my, uh, my fan group is a little uh, up in the air yet about the dragon. They're, they're, they're not used to something like a dragon from me. And so the, uh, the feedback on Instagram has been better than the feedback back in my group. Because they're sort of going, wait a minute. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll bring them around. They'll learn to love my little dragon. Okay, so now uh, one of the things that I've been trying to do also is to make these uh, sections here look like uh, uh, like 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 a satin where the 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 button is pushed into it, you know, have it a little dome-like dimension. And so the way that I've done that, is to just use the bright blue, which is number 1000. And I just do the very outside uh, 
edges. of each little section. And this is something that May has shown me time and time again, uh, that if you put it around the outside and then just bring it in a little bit, it really gives a nice uh, depth. So then, sorry, I, you just wet the inside like this, and then you do the outside, and the color will just flow right into the wet areas. And you can dab off your brush. And I will tell you that for me, learning to draw is simply practice. And Sammy asked me the other day about uh, about my sketchbook. And, you know, other than my swatch book, I don't really keep a sketchbook. Whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh because every sketch becomes a finished drawing because I erase. I draw only in pencil and then I erase and I erase. Sorry, I didn't mean to spin the book so quickly on you. Uh, until I get exactly what I want. So my sketchbook is uh, really my finished drawings. So I guess you could say that my lovely little girl here is a sketch and I simply kept going and kept going and kept going and erased and erased and erased until I got her exactly with the face that I wanted uh, and then I inked her so CLA 19 first one of the year Yay! I'm so excited. I really am so excited about that. Uh, okay, and so I will, I will uh, cease and desist here in just a second, given that I have been waxing on for 45 minutes. Thought I'd do this last one over here, just to to show you just some different techniques with the uh, with the ink tents. And I think that probably the reason why I'm even thinking about, uh, well, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why I'm even thinking about that other subject tonight. I just know that it crossed my mind. And so I thought that if, you know, if hearing that story and, and, uh, and, and how I handled it uh, helped somebody, then that's great. That'd be exactly why I'd shared it. Because darn it, people won't change just because you want them to. <laughs> and that just causes a whole world of hurt all over the place. So I think that, I mean, obviously I still have 
just these two little ones to do. And I think I will do those off camera, but look for this to be posted very shortly. Uh, actually, I think I, I posted the work in progress uh, to Instagram already. So I'll probably be posting this one on uh, Facebook. And uh, I will post the other one, which is the one we've been working on in the stream, uh, which I will continue on with uh, as well, but not on, not on, at least not on a stream. I might make a video of uh, where I go with this next but I've been adding to it and and doing some stuff. Uh, these could actually go side by side almost, but this one I think is a little more colorful. This one's a little more colorful. Okay, so that I think is it. I have my ink tints. I will finish this up. And until we meet again, uh, Please, everybody, color something pretty, and I will see you on Sunday when we will be coloring, or I will be coloring, and this will be in the shop, my new little dragon. I can hardly wait. See you then. Bye. Oh, and color something pretty. <laughs>